This is Theo Greminger, a.k.a. the OG Fantasy here at Player Profiler. We're talking fantasy sleepers. Every week I'm bringing you a couple of players that I think are going below the radar. Either some of these guys might not have gotten picked up in your league on the waiver wire. Some of these guys might be waiver wire selections next week. If you're in a jam and you're hurting this week, consider putting one of these guys in your lineup. More likely than not, most of these guys are stashes. Uh, but we're in bye week hell right now, guys. Four bye weeks this week, two next week. And then in week seven, we have six teams on bye. So we're going to get after it. A little shorter video than the last few weeks because we have two less games to work with. Anyway, we're starting at the quarterback position, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield is a guy that's not playing this week. But if you're really not liking your quarterbacks, consider stashing Mayfield on a bye week. But he's quarterback 13 overall through four games played, coming off his best performance of the season, three passing touchdowns last week against New Orleans. The Buccaneers are also utilizing him as a runner, 23 rushing attempts in the last three games. Tampa's 3-1 and one on the season. Mayfield's here to stay. He's a must-start in super flex leagues, and you might be streaming him in some single QB leagues. For this week, Josh Dobbs. Dobbs is available in 82% of Yahoo leagues, quarterback 16 on the season, he has at least 40 rushing yards in three straight games, elevating his weekly floor. Arizona has a solid trio of pass catchers in Hollywood Brown, Zach Ertz, and Michael Wilson. And they also have James Conner out of the backfield. Arizona's only one and three on the season, but they're going to go at it this week. They have the Bengals coming to town. The Bengals just gave up 27 to Tennessee. This could be an interesting game for Dobbs. Zach Wilson. Wilson is available, shockingly, in 92% of Yahoo Leagues. Uh, Wilson played his best game uh, as a pro, I thought, the other night against Kansas City. Um, you know, I've been a Zach Wilson basher, but the matchup against Denver is incredible. Denver just gave up four passing touchdowns to Justin Fields. They have been getting shredded by everyone. The Jets are going into Denver. The Jets are passing the ball more. Zach Wilson targeted Garrett Wilson 14 times last game. He also is connecting with Alan Lazard, Tyler Conklin. Uh, I like Wilson this week. Running backs, Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard's my favorite sleeper this week. He's available in 72% of Yahoo leagues. He outsnapped and outgamed Miles Sanders in Carolina's week four loss to Minnesota. Sanders is dealing with a pec injury and a groin injury. Hubbard looks like the more explosive back right now. Uh, Hubbard had 16 touches last week. The Panthers are 0-4, and they have a very difficult matchup in Detroit, but this is a volume play, and I think Hubbard could be a volume-based RB2 this week. I think he has an opportunity for a few more receptions if Sanders continues to you know, struggle with his health. Tajay Spears, I have to mention it every week. He's available in 76% of Yahoo leagues. He had his best game as a pro, 58 combined yards last week. Tennessee stomped Cincinnati. This week, they go into Indianapolis. Huge game in the AFC North. That is a wide-open division right now. Jacksonville plays Buffalo this week. Tennessee goes up against Indianapolis. This is uh, some tilting games for these AFC, excuse me, AFC South teams. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one for Spears. The Titans are going to unleash King Henry, obviously. But they the, the Titans team they're facing just conceded 184 combined yards to Kyron Williams and Ronnie Rivers. Make sure you're stashing Spears. Keaton Mitchell might not play this week, but we're stashing him. He's still available in 79% of Yahoo leagues, this is a guy who runs a 4-3-7-40. You read about him in my waiver wire column. You saw him in my waiver wire video. But Mitchell, his competition for touches in this backfield is Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, and Melvin Gordon could could be you know let go any day now. He's he's dust. So Keaton Mitchell, think kind of Tariq Cohen like as a smaller back who's explosive, who can do it, uh, you know, on long explosive runs when he gets into space. And also, he's a solid receiver out of the backfield. Keaton Mitchell could be a guy that we're putting in our starting lineup in the second half of the season, and he doesn't cost you anything right now. He's sliding under the radar. He's also IR eligible still in a lot of leagues, so you're able to roster an extra player with Keaton Mitchell. Ronnie Rivers. Ronnie Rivers has his best game of the, as a pro. Uh, he had 47, uh, 47 rushing yards, and he caught two passes in week four, uh, week four's win over the Colts. I mentioned Ronnie Rivers as for two reasons. Ronnie Rivers is the handcuff to Kyron Williams. People need to, to get to get around on that. Uh, they like Ronnie Rivers certainly more than Zach Evans. Um, 
and this is this is going to be a thing. Ronnie Rivers also could have an opportunity for more playing time this week. Kyron Williams missed practice on Wednesday. I don't think it's anything serious, but Kyron Williams has been one of the most heavily utilized running backs in all of football. Uh, this is a guy who we're not sure how he's going to be. You know, a lot of guys in the NFL just cannot handle the volume and it catches up to him. It's happened over the years. I don't know if that's going to be a thing with Kyron Williams, but I know he's missing practice for maintenance days already. That could be because they trust him so much, but it could be that they trust him so much and they're worried that he's getting run into the ground. Ronnie Rivers could be an inter- interesting one. If Kyron Williams were to go down, Ronnie Rivers would be a guy we want to put into our flex. Wide receivers, Rashi Rice is my favorite sleeper this week. He is available in 67% of Yahoo leagues. Last week, he was the second leading target uh, in Kansas City. He only had five targets. It's not that exciting. But week three, he almost had a huge game against Chicago. He had a touchdown overturned. And last week, you know, was quiet. But I do think that the Rashi Rice game is coming. The Minnesota Vikings are the most generous team in football when it comes to giving up uh, fantasy points to the opposing wide receivers. I'm looking at Rashi Rice. Other wide receiver I like, Zay Jones. Zay Jones, week one, had seven targets, five catches, 55 yards, and a touchdown. Then week two, he had a quiet game, but they kept targeting him, uh, and it just didn't happen. Zay Jones, big game Zay, is a thing for Jacksonville. No matter what's going on with Calvin Ridley, Evan Ingram, and Christian Kirk, they're going to take shots to Zay Jones. He's going to get targets in the red zone. He's going to get targets over the top. Uh, This is a guy who had 13 targets in his two games he played this year, comes back from an injury. Jacksonville has their most tilting game of the year. Jacksonville is 2-2, two and two, playing Buffalo in London. They're going to take some shots to Zay Jones. If I'm very desperate this week, I'm throwing Zay Jones into a flex, an upside swing for the fences type flex play. Michael Gallup, available right now in 79% of Yahoo leagues. Gallup has had 13 targets, 11 catches, 152 receiving yards this past two weeks. Uh, Gallup is looking good. Uh, This is a San Francisco defense that certainly is tough, but they gave up two touchdown grabs to Michael Wilson last week, uh, and they can be beaten over the top and on the outside. I think that they're also going to be keying in on CeeDee Lamb. Look for Gallup to have, you know, the beneficial matchups, and that's a guy that, you know, if you're desperate, consider Michael Gallup. Wondell Robinson. Wondell Robinson is seeing an uptick in in targets and an uptick in in touches. He had five targets uh, when New York lost to San Francisco. That was his first game back from injury. Then last week, he drew six targets, and he had a rushing attempt against Seattle. Miami's going to pressure Daniel Jones and the Giants to try to keep up, uh, and I think Robinson could be a sneaky bet for double-digit touches. The two players that I'm going to mention are definitely not guys you want to start, but these are guys that I'm going to consider stashing in deep formats. Pop Douglas and Tyquan Thornton for the New England Patriots so the Patriots just suffered a 38-3 to loss. When this sort of thing happens, sometimes teams go back and self-scout and say, who are the guys that I need to get more involved? What's going on here? My offense can't move the ball. And Pop Douglas has flashed this season already. He is a rookie wide receiver out of Liberty. He has the ability to also run the ball. Smaller guy, 5'8", but he's exciting. He uh, has about 4'4 four, four speed. Uh, like I think he ran the, at the combine. He was a 4'4'4 four, four, four guy. Um, But he really moves well. He's an exciting player. A lot of people in New England want him to get more touches. I like uh, stashing him. And Tyquan Thornton comes off the IR. Thornton was the fastest player in the combine two seasons ago. And if you'll recall, if you read my waiver wire column, Thornton popped up into it a few times last year. He had a couple of big games. He They used him on design runs last year. So I'm wondering if Pop Douglas or Tyquan Thornton or both are more utilized this week. Then the tight end spot, we got to talk about Jonu Smith. Jonu Smith led Atlanta with 95 receiving yards last week. Jonu Smith has now had six or more targets in three straight games. I'm done being frustrated by Arthur Smith, and I'm just going to react to it. There is a connection between Arthur Smith and Jonu Smith. They were together in Tennessee. Uh, Jonu Smith had his best football played in Tennessee. That's what got him that massive contract from New England. Now he's back to getting you know solid production. Smith has now had six or more targets in three straight games. We can't discount that at the tight end spot. And Kyle Pitts uh, is still getting healthy. Uh, Arthur Smith alluded to this this week that Pitts is still banged up. You're obviously seeing that in his usage. And Jonu Smith, I mean, 
95 receiving yards, that sounds like what Kyle Pitts managers wanted when they were drafting him this summer. Jonu Smith is actually doing it. I think Jonu Smith is a mid tight end two this week for Atlanta. And then a little bit more of a floor play, Tyler Conklin. Tyler Conklin had 17 targets over his last three games played. He's gone over 50 receiving yards twice. He's not scored a touchdown, but he's a low-end tight end two floor play. This matchup against Denver is really good. Uh, and if you're desperate, you can consider attacking it with Tyler Conklin. Or if you're feeling bold, you're rolling with Zach Wilson. Anyway, this is Theo Greminger. Stick with us all week long at Player Profiler. We're bringing you great shows. We're bringing you great guests on our podcast. And we're bringing you some fun videos like this. I hope you guys crush your leagues. Uh, let's get it. Let's win some money this year. Let's win some trophies.